Psychonauts 2, a title that for years I would have probably called you crazy for thinking it could happen, even now after I finished it and completed it, it's still hard to believe that the original Psychonauts, a cult game from the mid 2000s, would ever get a sequel. It was Double Fine's first game and after this, and Brutal Legend's commercial failure, it almost drove the studio into bankruptcy. It showed a sad reality that even if you're making good games, AAA is really not the way to go with these more experimental titles, as it becomes extremely hard to turn a profit on them, as general audiences don't generally gravitate towards the different and weird. But it's not all bad, Double Fine would go on to become one of the most prominent indie developers which allowed them to keep on their more experimental games without, you know, breaking the bank, hopefully. But that also brings us back to the game we're reviewing today, Psychonauts 2, and how this is very much a AAA game in my opinion. Well, this probably came from Microsoft's acquisition of the studio, which while always a scary position, and we never know the intentions of these publishers when buying a studio like this, like for example, EA buys studios to take them behind an alley and shoot them in the back of the head. But thankfully here, it led to the creation of this game, which I don't think would have come together without that Microsoft money, or at least not in this level of quality, because yeah, this game raised $4 million by crowdfunding, but 4 million for a game of this magnitude is um, nothing. And while I don't want to go too deep into the history of what happened in the words of Team Schaefer on being bought by Microsoft, here's what he said. We had to cut our boss fights. Now we are able to put those back in. And we're like, we think people would have noticed if we didn't have those boss fights. So this is all to say that while I love indie games, I think a perfect storm happened for this game to come to life and I don't think Psychonauts 2 would have been this amazing game without that journey. So let's finally get into it with the story of Psychonauts 2, following right after the first game or more precisely after the VR game Rhombus of Ruin. And a lot of questions have been raised on whether or not you should play the first game before this one, given it's a direct sequel, but it's also a story coming out over 15 years after the original. And my first thing to say on the issue is, you don't need to play the VR game. It gets explained in the opening in like less than a minute and it's not a game worth playing unless you're a super fan of the franchise and you already have a VR headset. As for the first game, well, you could play this game without it. The question is, why would you? You can play the game for free on Games Pass, and even if not in that situation, this is a game that often sells for as little as a dollar. And I will say it right now, you should play it if only simply to know if you like this type of game, because in my opinion, if you don't like the first game, I don't think you're gonna like this one either, despite their difference in age and technology. They are at the core very similar games, which is a good thing let me tell you. But now let's get into talking about the actual story of this game, once again it's a direct sequel and now Raz is an intern at the Motherload, which is the main base of the Psychonauts as you try to figure out what led to the events of Rhombus of Ruin. As apparently someone was controlling the villain of the previous game during those events, a bigger and more powerful villain, which is a very sequel thing to do, but it works as it adds a bigger sense of mystery to the story, making for some really enjoyable story beats as it slowly unravels, especially as it relates to our main characters. And this is basically the main drive of the plot, figuring out who the villain is and stopping his ongoing plan. And of course, in this quest, doing one of the main things of the Psychonauts, which is going into the minds of various different people. And this is where my biggest doubts for this game lie, as my fear would be that we just wouldn't have things like Miller's Mind or The Milkman, and we don't, but we have new things, dealing with new topics and emotions, which I think is the way to expand on this type of idea. One that really stand out here, for example, was where you go into a mind that's been sitting in a jar for years, 
and you know they kind of just stop thinking so you have to bring back their senses and their memories through the level this making for one of the most visually overwhelming levels and that kind of working as this idea that like well if you open your eyes in the morning and they haven't adjusted yet to the light it's gonna like blind you and you know then taking that and extending it to someone that's just been sitting in a jar for however long at least that was my interpretation it might be wrong but i particularly liked it it's also just related to the fact that this was a mind that clearly did a lot of drugs which also leads me to say that this game can be a lot more straightforward with its themes psychonauts 1 also did this sometimes it had definitely had a lot of jokes for adults but i think here it does have a tendency of being more direct with it which i think might come from the idea that not a lot of kids will be playing this one as the core fan base for this game is a bit older now which happens when you know release a sequel 15 years later but i have to say that in terms of how this affects the actual writing i personally would say it's neither bad or good thing it's still funny and that's good and in terms of the overall quality of this world while i still think i like the original better I am not sure how much of that is from nostalgia and the original Psychonauts being one of my favorite games of all time. But regardless of that, what is here is really good and we'll talk a bit more about it during the gameplay. But I will say that my biggest complaint for these levels is that there just aren't as many gimmicks as there were in the original levels. Not as many levels completely change the way you play the game and stick more to that traditional control of platforming which i know to many people is a positive but i personally really enjoyed the gimmicks of the original game and i think they really helped the pacing except for that one theater one but you know we don't talk about that one and to be fair i wouldn't say that this game suffers from pacing either honestly i would say my only complaint about it story and pacing wise would be that i wish certain characters could have used more development or at least more screen time for me this mostly means lily who now has a more important role and position in the story but it's not like she's done wrong here also on a more personal note and not really a complaint I wouldn't have minded to see more returning characters, mostly talking about the dopey kids from the camp here, even though they definitely have an analog here with the other interns, so it might have been weird to have both here. And you know, once again, not really a complaint, just something I wouldn't have mind seeing. Now let's move on to the gameplay though, where it's very much Psychonauts, obviously it's still a platformer collect-a-thon game, all the basic powers are still here double jump and more importantly the levitation which gives you the ball that very much like the original psychonauts allows you to cheese some platforming which i appreciate then other simple ones like telekinesis the psi blast pyrokinesis and clairvoyance are back and do exactly the same things clairvoyance still being a very fun little thing that i won't spoil if you don't know what it is so i will focus on the new ones the mental connection which is basically a grapple then time bubble which allows you to slow down enemies or certain objects for platforming and finally the projection which creates a paper archetype of raz which mostly allows you to reach certain previously unaccessible areas the type of areas that will, you know, tease you the whole game, as this is one of the last powers you unlock. This archetype can also work as a decoy during battle, and he also never shuts up, which the game acknowledges and even has a pin to shut him up, but more on that later. Now speaking of the combat here, much like the original, it's fine. I do think that the controls feel a lot tighter, even for the platforming as well. And it helps, but it's still not the reason anyone plays these games. But I will say because of these new powers having easy battle uses, it does also make it more enjoyable than the original. Now talking about the collectathon side once again, very similar to the original with the figments, the emotional bags and their tags, I'm not gonna make the joke everyone makes in these reviews, and the memory vaults that also give you a little bit of backstory on the characters whose mind you're in. 
and the half of mind which are new here they serve to upgrade your health but these also work very similar to the jarred brains from the original it's uh, again a very faithful sequel even the same issues are here like trying to figure out which figments you're missing which i would say was the worst part of 100 percent in this game and the worst part of 100 percent in the original one there really should be a way to help you find these figments because it's a bigger problem here since the levels are just bigger and they never specify in which part of someone's mind these figments are missing in and these minds are often divided into multiple areas like simply telling you in which area they were would help it so much and adding to this issue is just that with modern graphical fidelity it's a lot easier for the figments to just blend in with the environment because there's just so much detail in my experience i had some of the missing ones just standing there in plain sight and when i found them i just had the most f my life moment that being said i would say i did find most of them just through regular exploration but please just put something to help people find the missing ones once they reach the end of the game or something like that moving on though aside from a hundred percenting there is of course again and i'm saying this a lot coming from the original game the ranking up system which allows you to unlock new things here it allows you to upgrade your powers which mostly make them more proficient in combat or equip pins that require a certain rank these pins are new things to do in this game as they can give you things like aesthetic changes like for example the first one gives you the choice of a change of color for the levitation ball which to be fair the original also had and had more color options so come on guys but most of them will focus on once again your powers and modifying them to make them stronger and also a few miscellaneous ones that do things like find more titanium which is the currency of this game which is also very much like arrowheads even in looks Another one would be the power to automatically grab some of that currency and health from the world from further away with the drawback to these being you can only equip three at a time which makes sense and to be fair combat wise you probably get very overpowered through the regular upgrade so I get why not give you more equipped slots but I do wish that I didn't have to share the slots for both combat and aesthetics. Also picking of slots you can equip 4 of your psi powers which is one more than you could in the original game but still I wish you could just equip them all somehow, I don't know. It is a bit annoying to have to change them around in the middle of combat even if it becomes very fast as you get used to it. Overall though in a core way this really boils down to do you like the original Psychonauts and if so then you'll like this. The level designs are also very similar with the open areas that work as bases that you can also explore and look for collectibles and do small side missions and then the actual level so to say being a lot more linear and focusing on telling a story. It's not a unique format to this game but it does fit it really well. It allows to sell this world as an actual place where people live and in this case work and then have those more psychedelic and mind bending locations pun intended. As we move to talk about the visuals here it's where this game stands out from well any other platformer along with the story with how unique it is and it's also where it stands out from its prequel. While I love the way the original looks and personally I think it has aged wonderfully and I know that's not the popular opinion but I really like the way the original looks to this day but from a technical standpoint there was just no way it could pull the things this game does. The level of detail in each scene and its variety it's incredible. Levels get to a level of detail that it's almost overwhelming looking at them for the first time. And it's hard for me to put it into words because well I don't want to be spoiling anything because once again 
Much like its prequel, each level tells a story, a story of a person whose mind you're intruding and the problems they're dealing with. And that's what makes it so special. Yeah, it looks great purely from a technical standpoint, but it's by giving it meaning that not only it adds to the story, but also their characters and gives them a level of complexity we don't really see in this type of cartoony and silly characters. And well, I really like that. But let's not dwell too much and move on to the soundtrack, which is fine. I mean, it's good. It even has a guest appearance by Jack Black for a song. But when you compare it to everything else in this game, it does stand out as the weak spot. It's serviceable, but not particularly memorable. Voice acting wise though, it is still great and it's important to mention because of the time between this game and the first one as doing that and maintaining the same voice actors feels like quite a feat honestly or if any voice was changed I simply could not tell. It's something that I think really adds to the world or keeps the world alive and I think we just take it for granted and that's why I thought it would be important to mention. What I didn't take for granted though was this game. I already said in the beginning I never thought this game would actually happen. Even after the initially successful crowdfunding, I still had my doubts. But out of all the games that either have long development times or return from the abyss, this is one that comes out in its most truest form or true to its roots, a game that understands what makes its series great and reproduces it to the modern era. Do I like it more than the original? No, and I probably never will. I have a lot of nostalgia for the original and I will still say that I prefer that story, that world and the gimmicks of that game a bit more and that's not to take away from how good this game is as this is still an amazing game that has both meaning on one side and has that freedom of gameplay on the other while still having well built levels around platforming which I feel a lot of modern platformers have forgotten how to do. Not throwing shit at anyone but for those reasons I am giving Psychonauts 2 a 9 out of 10. It is not for everyone, combat is not the best and even from a pure platforming standpoint, even despite my praisings, it's still never as tight as something like a mainline 3D Mario game. But it is everything around that, that core gameplay that makes it such an amazing and unique experience that makes it so easy to recommend. But in this case, I would once again recommend you playing the first game first. Because, well, it will be much cheaper and I legitimately think that if you don't like that one, then you won't like this one either and vice versa. So just do it. Don't be afraid of older games. If you did play the original game though and you enjoyed it, then yes, of course, play this game. What are you, mental? Anyways, I hope that you enjoyed watching and if so, please consider subscribing and liking and even commenting all the things you can do for free. And once again, I'm trying to change the way I do my reviews and trying a more free and opinionated format over the more cold and technical one I was getting kind of used to, but it's kind of like trying to relearn a lot of it and doing that kind of does the opposite of what I'm trying to do with the whole free flowing thing. But you know, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully it will become more organic as I go along and I get more comfortable with it. But you know, whatever will be, will be like a billionaire investing in it. Anyways, I hope you're having a good day and goodbye.